Welcome to chapter four in advanced marketing. Uh, here we're building on chapter three where we talked about uh, analysis and here we're actually taking that analysis and uh, making sense of it and putting it, it into what we call SWOT analysis, which then leads us into figuring out what we can do to develop a competitive advantage and provide some sort of strategic direction, okay? All right, SWOT analysis, you guys have done this in numerous classes I know already, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here um, telling you what it is. You can just read through this slide, and press pause in the video and read through the slide um, if you want. But it's a good way to kind of put everything down on paper and you can take a step back and look and say, okay, um, this is good, this is not so good, this is terrible. You know, different things, different issues going on, okay? Um, it is criticized, you know, it's kind of an academic exercise and not really that exciting, but um, if it's done right and done uh, well, it can be a, a pretty good uh, resource going forward. Okay, benefits, very simple. Doesn't cost much to do. You can do lots of things in it, okay? Um, how to do a SWOT analysis? Well, do all these things, you know. Stay focused. Uh, number two is very important. Do not uh, underestimate who you consider competition. Companies tend to define their competition too narrowly. So, for example, if you're a, a movie theater, for example, you know, your competition is not just movie theaters. It's also streaming, it's television, it's DVDs, it's um, the theater, it, um, you know, like, um, uh, you know, drama theaters, it could be sporting events, any kind of thing that people do for entertainment uh, other than go to the movies could, could be considered uh, some sort of competition. So you got to be very careful there. You need to involve people from other departments in this exercise to make sure everyone's on the same page here, okay? Um, take a step back, look at things from the consumer's point of view. Uh, that's um, a big deal. And make sure that you don't confuse internal and external issues. This is done a good bit uh, in the SWOT analysis, a lot of confusion, especially between um, weakness, uh, no, strengths and opportunities. All right, nothing to, to, to really read here. I mean, from my standpoint, you can certainly read through them and you should, but just know that um, the, the whole notion of planning strategy should kind of uh, proceed from a SWOT analysis because the information there should help guide you big time, okay? Um, Some good examples of what goes into a SWOT analysis, strengths, what you do well, weaknesses, what you don't do well, threats, what are some trends out in the marketplace that could uh, potentially hurt your ability to be successful. All those are pretty straightforward. This is the place where a lot of students get tripped up. So when you do SWOT analysis, a common mistake that is made is that people will put um, alternatives here about um, you know, uh, enter this market, add this product, enter that market, um, you know, start distributing the product through this other channel. So it's about uh, people are like talking about solutions here, but that's not what this is for. A SWOT analysis is a situational analysis. It's a snapshot in time. Okay, so here you talk about trends that the um, company could capitalize upon. Okay, and these trends are not specific to the company, they're specific to the industry. Okay, so, um, you know, you're in uh, artificial intelligence consulting, okay, an opportunity is the fact that that particular market is growing rapidly, okay. Um, you work in, um, you have a coffee shop, and a coffee shop down the street has uh, run into some trouble and they're going out of business. That's huge. Okay, government has deregulated some particular aspect of business. If you watched um, chapter three, uh, I talked about uh, the microbrewery uh, direct distribution to uh, consumers for home use that is uh, being removed in the state of Texas as of September 1st, 2019. That's a huge opportunity if you are a 
uh, microbrewery, okay? So keep that in mind. SWOT analysis is not a place to talk about what you can do. It's a place to talk about external trends, things not specific to the company that the company could potentially uh, capitalize upon. So a SWOT matrix is basically a lot of words on the screen, on the screen just to tell you that you can put the SWOT in a uh, basically a two by two table with you know one uh, cell for each of the four components of the SWOT analysis. Okay, um, it's important to to focus on bullet point number two here. Um, this should be based on customer perceptions, not manager perceptions. There could be a big difference between the two. But um, if you're a marketing organization, everything revolves around the customer. So you need to, to take, a, uh, take a, their view and not your own view, okay? Here's an example of the matrix, okay? And so once you kind of get everything in the matrix, uh, things that uh, you try to do is you try to convert weaknesses into strengths. You try to convert threats into opportunities. And also you absolutely have to want to match up your strengths with opportunity. So if there's some opportunity out there in the marketplace, how can you use your strength or a strength to capitalize upon that opportunity? Once you have that SWOT in place and you take a step back and take a look at it, from there you should figure out what your competitive advantage is. What is that thing that you, that you do? better than everyone else? What makes people come to you over the competition, okay? What is it you do better than everyone else that cannot be easily imitated, okay? You've gotta have something or you have nothing, basically, is what we can say, okay? Um, three kind of um, areas of competitive advantage, operational excellence, product leadership, or customer uh, intimacy. So if, if we, uh, we're in face-to-face -face class. We could stop here and say, I could ask you, you know, who has operational excellence? You would say Chick-fil-A, probably. Uh, who has product leadership? You would probably say Apple. Who has customer intimacy? You'd probably say something like Southwest Airlines. Those are good examples of companies that have each of these types of competitive advantages. Okay. The source of your competitive advantage can come from lots of different places. Um, so, you know, distribution... Amazon, absolutely. Uh, pricing, uh, pricing's tricky because for something to technically be a competitive advantage, it has to be hard to be imitated. And so it's not that hard for other companies to just uh, copy your price, okay? Uh, so, but but I, I guess there, in some situations, possibly if you've kept your costs really low in some way, then, then it could be a competitive advantage, but be very careful with that one, okay? So all kinds of sources of competitive advantage. Relational, relational advantages. These are advantages related to, you know, the connection you have between the firm and the customers. Okay. So a lot of companies have this and can't really kind of put their finger on why it is or how it is, but um, it, it can be a pretty significant competitive advantage. Okay. Um, a little more about each of these operational excellence. Uh, Walmart's a good example. Dell's a good example. Okay. Um, helps keep costs low. They pass those costs on to consumers. Okay. Um, like it says here, operational excellence allows you to target a broad market. Okay. Product leadership. Pfizer's a good one. 3M's a good one as well. Um, you know, Typically, uh, you're pr providing some sort of product that uh, is more desirable than the competition's products, okay? In this situation, your segment should be a very narrow group, very narrow, very, very similar or homogenous group, okay? And then you have customer intimacy. We talked about, uh, or I mentioned Southwest, but Nordstrom and Amazon both fall in uh, this as well. So... Again, not going to read through all these. You can take a look there. Uh, strategic focus. Once you kind of figure out your competitive advantage, then you go into a uh, thinking about what your strategic focus is. Okay. Um, you can be aggressive. You can go after lots of different things, have lots of different uh, uh, kind of strategic initiatives. Okay. Um, so there is that, um, you know. Diversification, you may want to kind of move things around because there are lots of threats out there. 
um, turnaround. You know, you're not doing so great, but there are lots of opportunities. So you can do some things to help kind of turn yourself around. And then defensive. You've got lots of weaknesses and there are lots of threats. You know, if you're in this particular kind of mode, um, it's a bit of a challenge. So a industry where the companies are kind of in this mode um, these days is the textbook industry and being students you probably kind of understand this that you know there's textbook companies in general have lots of weaknesses you know their products aren't that great they're crazy expensive uh, all kinds of things going on and people are going to ebooks and open source books and putting books in the on reserve in the library and uh, maybe just using uh, case studies or you know, blogs and things for resources for classes. And so if you're in the textbook industry, you're probably in a defensive strategic focus at this particular point in time. Okay. Strategy canvas. So this kind of leads you back to a competitive, a competitive analysis, but you can basically plot uh, what you do and what your competitors do to kind of get a, a graphical look at how you guys are the same and how you are different. So here's a good example, okay? Uh, Southwest Airlines, they're the green line. So this is basically shows you what degree of offerings do they offer in each of these particular categories. So price is low compared to other airlines. Meals, not necessarily very uh, elaborate compared to other airlines. They don't do lounges really, so there's a big gap there, okay? But where are they better than the competition? Service, speed. Um, so those are those are the places where they compete. You know, they, their their strategic focus revolves around those things. So you can do this for basically, um, you know, any particular um, uh, company and set of competitors. You want to be careful and not put too many competitors in this chart because then it gets really hard to kind of read so you may end up with a bunch of charts charts each one has your particular curve and the curve for one only one and only one uh, particular uh, competitor so they've also put ca the car here a car is definitely a competitor to uh, airlines and the only real advantage it has is the flexibility and when you can leave okay cost maybe yeah I mean cost is pretty low I guess that's good, but um, you know, for the most part, it's people take the car, uh, if not for price, for uh, frequency on when they can leave. Okay, four actions framework. So once you kind of have an under an understanding of how the industry works, you can decide which factors to to uh, kind of raise, to get rid of, to maybe reduce your focus on, and so on and so on. Okay, so at some point in the airline industry, uh, the big focus on service started to kind of take a nosedive. So companies decided that, well, customers are pretty price sensitive. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce our uh, focus on, you know, providing high quality meals, and you know, high touch service, and, you know, just basically to uh, cater to more what uh, consumers are looking for at that particular point in time. Okay. Goals. We got to talk about goals and objectives. Once you have a strategy in place, you've got to come up with some sort of some goals. So strategic goals are very broad, uh, highly desired compliments, uh, accomplishments. We want to be number one in market share within five years. That's a good example. It's broad. It gives you a little bit of a quantifiable information, but doesn't tell you anything about how you're going to get there. Okay. Um, gives direction. Everything that you do the organization should, you know, begin with that goal or that end in mind. Okay. Objectives, much more specific. They're going to provide you very, very specific quantitative benchmarks. Uh, and the, the objectives, by, by achieving the objectives, you in turn are achieving your, your goal. So if, if market share leadership in five years is your, is your goal, objectives could be you know, things that are specific that are related to that, you know, increase our sales force by um, 30% in the next two years or um, 
you know, things like that, okay? So goals are broad, objectives are very general, but those objectives should uh, have an underlying motive of meeting the uh, uh, goals. Continuous objectives, these are ones that, that happen over time. Instead of having, you know, objective with a, with a deadline, with an end date, these are things that um, are going to be uh, used over and over and over and over. You're not going to change them very much. So companies tend to have those as well. Discontinuous or, or you know, one-time goal, or, I'm sorry, one-time objectives that you, um, you know, are, are going to shoot for. And usually they're going to be probably more ambitious than continuous objectives. Okay. All right. Goals, objectives should be consistent with the uh, goals and objectives as well as the mission of the organization. So that's important to, to keep in mind. You don't want to have a marketing strategy that doesn't um, honor the company's mission because that's just going to confuse customers and it's going to cause lots of problems. Okay. All right. That's chapter four in a nutshell. If you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know. You know where to find me. Talk to you later.